The Masai Mara National Reserve in southwestern Kenya and the Serengeti National Park in northern Kenya form an integral ecosystem, unique and unparalleled in the whole world. It is over these two wildlife reserves that the great saga of wildebeest migration unfolds year after year. This is the largest overland migration and one of the most magnificent spectacles of the natural world. More than two million animals, mostly wildebeest, accompanied by zebras, gazelles and other plains animals traverse over 800 km every year in a clockwise manner through the Serengeti Mara ecosystem following the rain, sprouting of fresh grass and the availability of water. With its rich abundance of wildlife comprising over 95 species of mammals including the Big Five and 570 species of birds, Masai Mara National Reserve easily ranks among the top destinations for wildlife enthusiasts. The reserve spread over 1,510 square kilometer, which is much smaller than its southern neighbor, the Serengeti National Park in Tanzania, which covers 14,763 square kilometer. The word Mara means spotted in Ma language of the Maasai people and denotes the vast savanna landscape dotted with isolated acacia trees and shrubs. All along its northern and eastern boundaries, the Mara Reserve has a host of conservancies where the indigenous Maasai communities own land and promote wildlife conservation and tourism. The wildlife roam freely across both the reserve and conservancies as they form one integrated ecosystem. <laughs> Visitors to Masai Mara, the journey begins at Nairobi. We prefer to take a flight from Nairobi Wilson Airport rather than spend six hours driving 280 km to Mara. Our nine member group board a Mombasa Air Safari 13 seater Cessna caravan bush plane. I'd like to kindly remind you to fasten your seat belts and it is a non-smoking flight. Yes. Okay. For when emergency exit to the back to the front. My name is Captain Ben. I'm being assisted by Douglas. Traffic. 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 Leaving the Nairobi skyline behind, our 45-minute flight takes us over the Great Rift Valley, flying at an altitude of about 10,000 feet. Closer to our destination, we see a boma, a traditional Maasai village. As the flight approaches Old Kiombo airstrip, the Mara greets us with the side of Olare Orok River and a small migrating herd of wildebeest. Located nearly 5,000 feet above mean sea level, Old Kiombo airstrip is a short dirt airstrip, like all airstrips in the Mara. Animals graze in the vicinity quite oblivious of the air traffic. Safari vehicles are ready to pick up their passengers. The airstrip is just an airstrip, no terminal buildings really. This is a convenient location for Maasai women to display and sell their ethnic handicrafts. It is a half hour drive from the airstrip to our camp. This straightaway turns out to be our first safari drive. We catch a glimpse of some of the animals we would see in abundance over the next few days.
We reach our destination, Mara Eden Safari Camp. We preferred to stay in a small tented camp in the wilderness instead of the larger compounds of luxury lodges. Strategically located on a bend of the Mara River with only 12 tents in the wilderness, Mara Eden Safari Camp suited our requirements perfectly. A small pod of resident hippos in the river right in front of our tents adds to the wild ambience. About 300 meters upstream, there is a large pod of resident hippos. We are in the African wilderness and our camp does not have any fencing. So even before we settle in our tents, we listen to the do's and don'ts of the camp life from the camp manager. Cyrus. Sometimes the elephant will come. Buffaloes, I've seen leopard twice. Ah. Not an, at one time, different times, but long time ago. That's so Cyrus. you can see anything. And more so, this is home of uh, crocodiles. Mm. Big, big uh, crocodiles. And also hippos. We are surrounded by the hippos. But so far, so good. They know us. They know we belong to this place. We have a lot of respect for them. They have a, road, a lot of respect for us, okay? So, uh, during the day, you can walk around the camp, no issue. During the day, you can walk on your own, from your tent to here, from your tent to our dining, this is our dining at the back. This, you can be free, you can walk freely. But during uh, night time, when it's dark, we uh, devise, we pick you from the tents, bring you here, either for the bar, for the fireplace, or dining. And later, after your meals, you can come back to the fireplace, or you can sit here. But when you are through, we take you back to your tent. After a sumptuous lunch, we are off on our first evening safari drive. The five male cheetah siblings near Old Kiombo airstrip are a big draw. They are quite oblivious to the close proximity of dozens of safari vehicles with excited onlookers. The five brothers form a formidable lifelong coalition capable of defending their territory, a distinct advantage over the single cheetah. The zebras make a quick exit as the five brothers are evidently on a hunt. There are around 10,000 to 15,000 African cheetahs found in the savannah and dry forests of Africa, mostly in East and South Africa, but their numbers continue to dwindle. In the 16th century, the Mughal emperor of India Akbar tamed 1,000 cheetahs for hunting blackbuck antelopes. The cheetah derives its name from the Hindi word cheetah, which means spotted one. Cheetah became extinct in India probably around 1952. The cheetahs urine mark their territory on a tree to deter other males. We have to, unfortunately, part company as we cannot cross the stream. Sunset and dusk in the Mara is a mystical experience. We step out of our tent at dawn to see a hot air balloon being filled for takeoff right across the Mara River.
for visitors willing to spend 450 to 500 US dollars per person a hot air balloon safari to enjoy a bird's eye view of the migration is a worthwhile option the flight lasts about 1 hour traveling anywhere between 15 to 25 km depending upon wind conditions a champagne style bush breakfast awaits the visitors at the end of the balloon safari As we start the morning drive, our Maasai driver guides, Jonathan and Ivans, give us the good news. A large migrating herd is heading for the Mara River near Lookout Hill. Without further ado, we drive straight towards Lookout Hill, hoping to witness a river crossing. A steady stream of white-bearded wildebeest interspersed with a few zebras gradually make their way to the Mara River near Lookout Hill. More than one and a half million white-bearded wildebeest, a subspecies of the blue wildebeest or brindle no, participate in the great annual migration through the Serengeti Masai Mara ecosystem. The gathering grows by the hour as the animals spend time grazing or lazily sitting in the open savanna. In the meantime, dozens of safari vehicles have lined up on both sides of the Mara River, but at a distance of at least 500 meters from the river, so as not to disturb the gathering. The river crossing begins all of a sudden, around midday, as if the herd was waiting for its leader to give the green signal. The ascent at the opposite bank is not easy for the animals because of steeply sloping rocky ground. This crossing point is however frequently used by migrating herds as they cross over into the Mara Triangle. As soon as the river crossing began, safari vehicles rushed in to take up the best vantage points along the river bank. Has this fellow been caught by a crocodile? Today is its lucky day. No crocodile in the water there. A short distance away, a Nile crocodile is basking in the sun on the dry riverbed, having had its fill. The Nile crocodile is the largest and most dangerous freshwater predator in Africa, and the Mara River is home to some of the largest ones. After about an hour, the river crossing stops abruptly as safari vehicles obstruct the path of the rushing animals. The animals turn back and start grazing in the savanna, hoping to resume the crossing later in the day after the vehicles have left. A pod of hippos are sleeping nearby, least interested in the day's proceedings. We rush to Ashnil, a few kilometers to the north of Lookout Hill. Information has come in that a migrating herd was gathering there. Safari vehicles have already lined up at a distance from the crossing point as the animals gather on the bank of River Mara. Just as the crossing begins, a couple of safari vehicles eager to take the best vantage points rush forward to the river bank, obstructing the path of the wildebeest. The herd turned away to try the luck later at another crossing point. About 200,000 to 300,000 Burchell zebras accompany the wildebeest in the Great Migration. The zebras and wildebeest graze together in harmony as they eat different parts of the same grass. The zebras live in permanent family groups with a male possessing a large harem of females which remains intact 
all through the migration. While Burchell zebra are found in abundance and are widespread in eastern Africa, the other two subspecies, namely the smaller mountain zebra found in southwest Africa and gravies or imperial zebra, largest of all of the wild equids found in Ethiopia and northern Kenya, are critically endangered. Researchers believe that the striped patterns on the zebras differ from animal to animal and that zebras recognize these unique patterns to distinguish herd relationships. Along with the wildebeests and zebras, approximately 400,000 Thompson gazelles traverse the entire 800-kilometer route of the Great Migration in large herds, sometimes aggregating several thousands. The East African Eland joins the Great Migration over short distances only. It is the second largest antelope in the world, being slightly smaller on an average than the giant Eland. A single calf is born after a gestation period of nine months. Although Elands are rather shy, we were able to approach them as close as 50 feet on some occasions. Coastal topis also join the migration, but like the elands, for short distances only. They are gregarious and live in herds, sometimes numbering several hundred. The Grants gazelles also join the migration over short distances. Jonathan informs us that two lionesses are stalking a sounder of warthogs near Requero. We make haste to reach the spot in time. The mother warthog manages to escape, but a little one is easily caught by the lioness. Lions have a fondness for warthogs. The two lionesses belong to the Nibur pride. The main diet of lions hunting as a team consists of medium-sized and large prey such as topi, zebra, wildebeest and buffalo. But if a lion is hungry enough and unable to find the food it prefers, it will eat anything it can catch, including birds, reptiles, fish, even mice and insects. Lions kill only when they are hungry. Spotted hyenas look on from a respectable distance. It is unlikely they will get a morsel out of this situation. Our evening drive takes us to the mating lions at Requero. Normally, only pride males have access to pride females. But here, Jonathan informs us that the lioness belongs to the Topi pride when the lion has come from the Olare Motorogi Conservancy. The mating ritual follows a regular pattern, about six seconds of intercourse followed by 20 minutes of rest and sleep. The male patiently waits for the female to get up to continue the proceedings. This has been going on for the last couple of days and may continue for another day or so. The honeymooning couple are completely unfazed by the constant traffic of safari vehicles and curious onlookers. Lions are capable of breeding throughout the year, although some seasonal patterns have been observed depending upon the region. During the mating period, the male and female will remain together constantly with the female being in estrus from four to eight days.
Ya Allah 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 ya All